currently just outside Montgomery, Alabama on the Hank Williams Lost Highway. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. I couldn't see this off to the side of the road and not stop. I mean, come on. Like a rolling stone, all alone and lost. For a life of sin, I have paid the cost. As I pass by, all the people say, just another guy on the lost highway. For you, Hank, one of the greatest songs ever from the Loop the Drifter album. Welcome to Montgomery. Now yeah, we blew right through Montgomery because I want to go about an hour further and go to a place called Georgiana. That's where we're really going to start our vlog today. That's right, baby. You only pass up where Hank Williams is buried to shoot an hour past there and go to his boyhood home. Hank wasn't country, he wasn't western. He was hurt music, and if you've ever hurt, then you know that this guy was singing the gospel for all of us. Nobody like Hank. Let's go see where it all started. Hank is by far my favorite country musician, my favorite hurting musician. This guy, I mean, he was a poet. I can't believe I'm finally gonna get to see where he started playing music from T-Tot. There it is. Oh man, he wasn't born in this town. Kind of a sad story, his, his dad had fought in the war and had PTSD. They ended up having to put him in an insane asylum and, um, well, an institution anyway. And uh, the house that they were living in burnt down shortly after that, so Hank and his family packed up and moved here to Georgiana, to this house. Now what's interesting about this house is that Hank learned to play from a black man in town named T-Tot and he would teach Hank as often as he could and when the weather would be too bad or too cold they would go under the stairs in that crawl space and that's where they would play. And directly across the street you can see this is the Hank Williams Senior Fan Club house. That's kind of cool. And just off to the left of where the house property is they have this nice old Georgiana train with Hank's name on it. I think most people know Hank from I'm So Lonesome I Could Cry or Cold Cold Heart or You're Cheating Heart or Move It On Over, Jambalaya, all that stuff but man you go listen to Luke the Drifter and that was the real Hank. That man, man, he just put his his heart out there. He told everything that he went through and he really, I mean, he owed it to his wife Audrey because without the love he had for her, I don't think any of those songs would have came out. The hurting, the love, all of that, it was all pulled right out of his soul from her. Amazing musician, amazing. And sadly dead before he was 30 years old. He had a back condition and his dad had pretty much the same condition. It was plaguing him his whole life. But the start of Hank's true musical career is all indebted to his mother. Lily was, she saw what talent he possessed. He would work and sell peanuts after school and shine shoes down at the depot. And she would save his money and buy him his first guitar with that money and then get him on radio shows here. And then once he thought he wasn't good enough and quit, she was the one that forced him to get back into playing music. So it really, we really owe a lot to her. It says Hank Williams Boyhood Home. Hiram Williams lived in Georgiana from 7 to 11 years old. In 1931, Miss Lily Williams moved Hiram and his sister Irene from rural Wilcox County to this house owned by Thaddeus Rose. When he was 8, his mother bought him a guitar for $3.50. Black Street musician Rufus T. Top Payne became his teacher. Hiram practiced guitar under the Ray's Cottage House and sang on the streets for tips. The family moved to Greenville in the fall of 1934 and then to Montgomery in 1937, where at the age of 14, Hiram became calling himself Hank. Now it says Thigpen's Log Cabin, popular dance hall. While still a teenager in the early 1940s, Hank Williams used to use his radio show on WSFA to promote show dates at schools, theaters, and honky-tonks in South Alabama. 
Fred Thigpen's Log Cabin, which opened in 1931, a mile from Hank's boyhood home, was one of the most popular dance halls. In 1992, Mayor Lynn Watson led the drive to buy the house for a museum. The city also relocated a portion of Thigpen's to this site. So let's go check that out real quick before we go in. And there it is, right in between the train and the house. Here's that little section of fig pins. Wow, can you imagine Hank playing there when he was a teenager? Holy cow. Let's take a look through the window, see what it looks like, huh? Well, let's go on in. I don't know if we can film in here or not. Look at that painting of Hank. And then here's the living room when you first walk in the house. The whole house is covered in photos and memorabilia of Hank. But yeah, this was his house for four years. Check that out, how about that? Let's go in here. They do have music playing so I'll have to talk quite a bit because I don't want to, uh, man. They have pretty much every picture you can ever think of of Hank in here. And here I believe is his bedroom. Take a look at this, how they've decked it out. Now they've got a Hank Williams story bedspread on there, a quilt that you can tell a lot of people have put a lot of hard work into. And even the curtains. And then look up above, it says Hank Randall Move it on over, honky tonkin, KWKH, WSM. Yeah, I mean, Hank was a big deal. He went from this humble beginning to being the star of the Grand Old Opry and then eventually being fired from the Grand Old Opry. There's his birth certificate. Hiram Williams. Look at that sink. This old radio. Oh, look at that. Look at that. There's an ad for Thig Pens. In uh, pen, somebody wrote 19, looks like 31. And that's a painting of the gravesite of Audrey and Hank. Don't worry, before we leave Alabama, you're gonna see this, don't worry. Now it says that this painting is a home owned by Faith Hill and Tim McGraw and it said Hank Sr. bought 500 acres in 1951 that included this house. At that time it was in a bad state of disrepair and after Hank and Audrey divorced in 1952, the property was sold at a loss. Oh man, look at that picture. There's Hank up there, there's Roy Acuff. And that's cool, that's the deed to the property that he bought. Take a look at that. And those are some of Hank's nudie suits on display. I mentioned that Luke the Drifter is my favorite Hank Williams album. And when it came out, since most of the sales that were made were through jukeboxes and everything, um, Hank originally didn't want his name on it. He wanted it just to say Luke the Drifter because it was like a depression album. It was his sadness album. And uh, then eventually they weren't nobody was buying it and it wasn't being played so they had to re-release it as Hank Williams as Luke the Drifter. Now let's head back through here and go into what I assume must be the kitchen area. Oh yeah, oh and a lot of free programs here. There's the kitchen. Wow, he would have probably washed his dishes in there and let's go and see what's in here. Oh I see a signed picture of Waylon right away. Some old milk bottles. Oh an old Jukebox, kind of like I was just talking about. Check that out. Now these are all, I believe, these are the collection of dishes that were actually owned and used by Audrey and Hank when they lived in Nashville. There are the coffee cups and saucers. Signed photo of Waylon that says to the Hank Williams Museum, named after a great man. Yeah, Waylon, one of Waylon's first hits was him singing a song about did Hank really do it this way, saying how, how he went to Nashville and they're telling him how to do things and he doesn't think that it's the way he should do it and they're saying, well, just, you know, Hank did it this way, he was successful and you will too. And then he has a great song with Hank Jr. 
If you've never heard it, go listen to it. It's called The Conversation, where they're talking about, basically the song is a conversation between the two guys talking about Hank Sr., saying let's talk about the man and not the habits, and it's a great song. Sadly, at one point, Hank and Audrey did split up, and this is Hank, it says, with a stewardess, and he eventually had another child named Jet. A girl. And that's Jet Williams right there. She looks just like him. Now in here, they have a couch. Let's see what this, this would have been probably the entertainment room. Oh, wow. And that's Pee Wee Moultrie's accordion. He was in Hank's band, The Drifting Cowboys. Hank Williams and The Drifting Cowboys. There's Hank's second marriage to Billie Jean. Boy, was she pretty, look at her. And Billie Jean is the mother of Jet. But many people believe that Audrey was the true love of his life. And there's Hank and Billie Jean's marriage certificate. Take a look at that. That's a handwritten letter from Hank in 1946. God welcome you in. Check this out. These are a whole list of basically um, earnings reports from Acuff Rose Publishing that uh, handled Hank's song. So this is how much money he was making for all that music. Each song divided up. The Hank Williams stamp. Look at that. Uh, it looks like a beach towel. Hank Williams beach towel? That's great. Yeah, if you don't know Hank's music, which I know you have to, everybody's had to have heard something, but man, go listen to it, it is amazing. Oh, they got a little cardboard cut out of Pappy Neil McCormick. He was the sitar player for Hank for quite a while. That's his sitar. He called it a contraption. Because <laughs> look, there's strings on the side and on top. Now we have a room in the front that we didn't get to see yet with a lot of great stuff in it. Here you can see more of the original dishes that Hank and Audrey had in their home. Now one of the sad parts that he had to deal with was that Audrey fancied herself a singer, but she wasn't a very good singer. So he had to let her sing to make her happy and people just put up with it because he was that good. There's the original sign that used to sit out front. So if you read this plaque, it says, standing on this bench in about the year 1927, Hank Williams performed for the first time, accompanied on the organ by his mother, in the Mount Olive West Baptist Church. So that means that Hank's very first performance ever was right there, and his mom would have been playing an organ while he danced around on that bench. Oh, let's check this out. So you can't get too much further over there, but if you notice, that is uh, Hank's eyeglasses because he used to wear eyeglasses. A lot of people don't really know that, but you can see in the little picture of him there when he was young, he's wearing them there, and they're right next to it. And then his straight razor, look at that. That's amazing. And then his guitar, one of his acoustic guitars. That's incredible, I love that. Now it says that this light was a stage light that was used in Municipal Auditorium in Shreveport when he was doing his Louisiana Hayride years. There he is, performing at the Hayride. Look at all these records. And then look, they actually have one of his suits. Look at that. Hank's jacket, shirt, tie. And they have one of his hats. That is incredible. Oh my gosh. And then right at the very bottom, Luke the Drifter. But take a look at that case. Isn't that amazing? And then in this case, you'll notice this has a lot of stuff about thing pins. And then down at the very bottom, they have a picture of thing pins, which we kind of saw in the back, and the original doorknob. There's thing pins. The room, as soon as you walk in, has to be just probably my favorite. I mean, the stuff in here, his guitar, his suit, his eyeglasses, his straight razor, that's, that's classic, it's unbelievable. And the original fireplace. All right, our tour of the inside is done. 
I think we should take a tour of the outside. What do you say? I mean, just think right below where we're standing right now is where a lot of the times Hank would learn guitar. Now I mentioned that, um, you know, one of the reasons was because of the weather, it was windy and, uh, but one of the things they told me inside and it totally makes sense. They said the other reason that he did it was because it didn't look too good for a black man to be seen with a little white boy on his own. So we're actually walking above where Hank would learn guitar. Wow. I hope you guys enjoyed this as much as I did. I love Hank Williams music so much. I think he really was, if you're going to call anything country music, I think it all started with him. There are people that did it before him, but nobody, nobody won over people the way that he did. He could win over people that weren't even country fans. He was just, he was that good. He was just that good. And every word that he sang, you could hear the heartbreak. You could hear a man that believed in love, but was fighting hard to keep it and fighting hard against fighting hard. So this is where it all started. Hope you guys enjoyed this. So let's call it a day here from Georgiana, and uh, if you're mad at me because we didn't see his grave, don't worry, you'll see it in two days. Because we are gonna head back to Montgomery, we're gonna do a couple of vlogs in Montgomery, and head out of there, and one of them will be to pay homage to Hank Williams Sr. and Audrey at their gravesite. Thank you for watching, and have a great night. Good night.